Hello, I'm Matthew. And I'm Joe. And we are here to talk about Nakama, which is... Uh, Nakama is a hugely scalable open source backend for games. Uh, in particular, it makes a lot of the difficult work of making games, such as setting up your social systems or your real-time messaging or your matchmaking, just go away. And we're going to talk about it particularly for Unity developers. So you might have seen other videos in this series where we did a, an introduction to Nakama for JavaScript and then an introduction with Unity. But this time, we're going to look at Unity, Nakama, and... Uh, Real-time. We're going to start getting into those social features of Nakama, and we're going to start by looking at real-time messaging. So we're going to put some users together in a chat room and let them talk to each other. Great. So we're going to dive straight into the code. Uh, if you hadn't watched the last video on Unity, getting set up with Nakama and Unity, I recommend you go and watch that now. You can find that elsewhere on this channel or in the link below. But we are going to start straight from our setup from where we were in the last video. We have a Unity project with a game object, which has a C-sharp script. And that C-sharp script uh, connects to the Nakama server via a client. And we're going to jump straight in and build a chat room. Cool. So, Right now, we have Visual Studio Community Edition opened attached to our Unity project. And let's run through what we briefly what we did last session. So we have this uh, client that's initialized. This is the client object that allows us to communicate with Nakama. Mm -hmm. uh, it's set up against our server, in this case, a localhost server. Uh, we have uh, a fake user where we've got an email and a password and that is authenticating and creating a session. So that user is able to, that user is in the Karma. Uh, they're, they're able to log in. And now we can go ahead and build a little chat experience for them. So what do we need to make this chat experience? Sure. So there's a couple of components we need. So first of all, we need to set up a socket connection with Nakama. So the client allows uh, us to receive information from Nakama, and the socket is going to allow us to send stuff back to Nakama and also to receive messages. But the socket is how the real-time part of Nakama works. So we're going to start by creating a socket, and then we're going to build the chat room. And then we're going to join the chat room and send some messages. And then we will also take a look at uh, how we can tell if we've received messages and talk a little bit about persistence and getting our messages in the database ah, okay. as well. So lots to cover. Let's get, let's get going. So we need to create a socket. And the Karma makes it really easy for us to create a socket. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a variable, which is an iSocket object, uh, which is uh, the socket interface. And that's provided for us with the Karma. So we can just go ahead. We've already got the Karma imported from our last tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a private iSocket and just call it socket. Super simple. So next up, we need to actually connect that socket object to a socket. We need to initialize and create that, create that socket. And we do that from the client. So the client has a method on it called new socket. So I'm going to grab that socket variable and do client dot new socket. And that will create that socket object for us. And so now it's ready to use. So at this point, we have a socket. And we can connect to that socket and use it. But it would be really useful for us if we could get some information back about, what, about when we have connected that socket, maybe when we've closed that socket, other things like that. Uh, so sockets, with our sockets, we can attach event handlers to them. And in C Sharp, we do that with Lambda functions. So let's start, away, let's start by uh, connecting to the connected event. So this will be something we output when we connect to a socket. So I'm just going to do socket.connected. Uh, and then when you add an event handler, uh, you can use the uh, plus equals syntax. So I'm going to do socket.connected and then plus equals and then do a Lambda function. So we're adding this Lambda function to this event handler um, and then I'm just going to output to say we've connected. So debug.log socket connected. Really simple and easy there. And I'm going to do the same for socket.close. Those are the two main things we need to know, whether we've connected and whether we've closed the socket. So I'm just going to do socket.closed, set up that Lambda function to catch the event handler, and then debug.log socket closed. Now, this is really, you know, you're just outputting something to the log. So exactly. it's very simple. But in reality, you could have a, a lot more functionality behind what happens. For sure. There. Yeah, absolutely. This is the sort of thing where, uh, as a user playing your game, losing connection to the socket could, for example, mean uh, maybe they're playing a mobile game and they've gone through a tunnel and their cell phone connection is lost. So at this point, you would use something like you'd use this event handler to display maybe connection lost to the game server or some sort of advanced message like, message like that. So. This last one is interesting. So we're, we're catching an event and the socket closes. Um, we, need, we also need to do it the other way around. If we close the game, we need to make sure that socket's closed safely. So what we're actually going to do here, all this code we're writing in the um, Unity start function, we're now going to go use another inbuilt Unity method, which is the on application quit. Mm -hmm. So if you were to close the game, we want to make sure that at close, uh, that socket gets closed down. So in, I'm just going to quickly create this function, private void on application quit. And then inside that, I'm going to uh, check whether the socket 
it's still connected. And if it is, I'm going to close it um, and I'm going to close it asynchronously again. So uh, we, we try and do everything asynchronously here because we're talking to a server and those operations could take a while. So we use the async version of all the Nakama operations where we can. So to check if the socket exists, um, C Sharp has a lovely little question mark operator, uh, which just checks whether the object is null. So I'm going to do socket question mark. And then on that, I'm going to use the method close async. And what this will do is when we close our Unity game, it will check if the socket has already been closed. If it hasn't, it will close the socket for us. That socket and connection to that server is securely closed. So that's our socket dealt with. And remember this for the next video in the series, because we're going to come back to this when we deal with matchmaking. Matchmaking also uses the sockets, and a lot of the concepts in the Karma make use of the same socket code. So you can reuse this throughout your time using the Karma. So we we'll have a socket, and all we've done now is dealt with our real-time connection to the Karma. What we now need to do is get set up with a chat room. So Nakama has multiple versions of chat. You can chat, users can chat one-to-one, -one, you can create group chats, or you can create chat rooms, I like kind of generic spaces that people can join and leave arbitrarily. So the difference between a group chat and a chat room is a group chat is specific specific players. Absolutely, yeah. Group chat is a created, is a fixed created group of players having a chat, whereas a chat room is a free to leave, free to join situation. And you can set limits to the amount of people in the chat room. Um, and you can, obviously, by virtue of the way you interact with the chat room in your game, you can limit who can join it. But in the Karma, it's fairly flexible. So there is one step I forgot after the socket, which is before we create our chat room, we need to actually connect that socket to the Karma. Uh -huh. We've defined the socket, we have it connected to it. So we just need to whack in here and await socket connect async. And then we give this our session. So we're connecting to the socket with the session that's the, with the user we authenticated. So as a parameter, we just pass it our session. And that socket is now connected. Uh, if we were to run this in Unity right now, we would get the, uh, hopefully, we would get the debug socket connected. But we'll try that out in a bit. So next up, the chat room. So chat rooms are kind of uh, ephemeral. You don't need to define a chat room and like build a chat room. Uh, the chat rooms are basically defined by uh, two things, the, um, the players in them and the name and then also the type, so three things. Um, but as long as there is a channel, as long as there is a room with a name and a player has joined it, it can exist. You don't need to set it up in order for a player to join it. OK. So, oh. Sorry, gone. Uh, but you specify a, a unique name for that room. Yes, you need to give the name. You need to give the room a name. So let's start by giving our room a name. So I'm actually going to do this uh, back up the top with our client uh, variable. I'm just going to define it as a constant string here. Um, I'm going to do it up here because uh, if this were a real piece of code, we would want to access that room name not just in our start function. So we might want to have the players join not just at the start of the game. So I'm just going to call it. Uh, I'm just going to do a private const. I'm just going to call it string, room name, and let's uh, call it heroes. That's where the heroes of our game will join. Wonderful. So having done that, I can now come down, and I'm going to uh, create a new room. Or let's, let's go with common chat parlance. Let's call it a channel. So I'm going to say var channel. And again, this will be an async function. So I'm going to say equals await. And it's on our socket. So socket dot join chat async. Um, yep, that's wrong. And then. Uh, the parameters for that, so first of all, it's the room name. So that room name we just defined. Uh, and then the channel type. So um, okay. there are multiple channel types, as we already spoke about. There's like one-to-one -one group. This is going to be a room. So channel type dot room. So I'll enter that in, channel type dot room. So if we were doing a one-to-one -one direct conversation, would you have to provide a room name then? No. In that case, your first uh, parameter would be the ID of the user you're talking to. Ah. So you just put in the, their, uh, their unique the karma ID. So uh, you would probably not want the player to enter that directly. You'd probably have them enter the username, and then you'd go and find their karma ID, and then you'd slap that in there. OK. Great. So we've defined that. We've put in uh, the room name and the channel type. And now we can say debug. Uh, let's check that we have actually joined this channel, or check we've created this channel. So I'm going to go ahead and type debug uh, log format. Again, just standard Unity console output. And then I'm going to stick the channel in here, um, our channel variable that we've created. And that will then tell me if that object has been created and whether that channel has been created. So at this point, we've connected the set. We've connected a socket. Uh, we have um, created a channel, an open chat room, and we have joined it. So next up, we want to post messages into that chat room. So again, in this point, uh, in your real game, you would have some kind of chat interface. We're just going to send these messages directly here in code on a fixed message just to demonstrate that working. Um, and when you 
send uh, when you prepare messages to be sent over the socket, they have to be in JSON. So you have to have uh, a string captured in JSON. Um, so we are actually at this point going to import a, another piece from Nakama. So Nakama comes with a little JSON library pre-installed so that you can easily uh, convert strings to JSON and work with Nakama. So I'm going to come back up to the top and whack in using nakama.tinyjson. Very small, easy to use library. So I'm going to come down and define our content. So var content, and I'm going to do it as a dictionary. That's going to be uh, where we've got the, uh, to capture the JSON object, it's going to have the field and the value. So it's going to be a string of string. And then uh, I'm going to create that. I'm going to actually uh, use to JSON uh, the method to convert a set of strings we have into JSON to be put into that dictionary. And is there a particular format that Nakama expects for the chat messages for that JSON? Not at all. It's just you just give it, you just take your strings uh, as a list. So you take your chat content as a list and just if you use uh, convert it straight to JSON, it will uh, hopefully work. So presumably then you could create your own format in your game and then handle it. So you might have some kind of gifting even through the messaging that would yeah, then be absolutely. handled in that way. Yeah, as long as you work out the serialization between your chat message yeah. and the JSON that we're going to pass down the socket, should be totally fine. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. So we're going to be classic about this and send the message hello world to our channel. So I'm just going to open two sets of brackets, stick in hello, comma, world, close that out. And as I said earlier, we're going to use the to JSON method to convert that, that, that set of strings into our JSON object. So dot to JSON. Great. So we defined that string. Now we need to send it over the socket. So this is going to look a bit, little bit weird in C sharp. Um, we are going to uh, use an underscore variable here because uh, when we write chat messages to a socket, it will return uh, basically like the, the state of the uh, socket to us. And we don't necessarily care about that when we send the chat message. So I want to throw that away. So uh, C sharp, as with many program languages such as Haskell, uh, gives us an underscore operator. That means discard this value. So I'm going to define an underscore equals and then uh, on our socket, I want to write those chat messages. And again, as within the common naming, all very straightforward. So I'm going to do socket dot write chat message async. And then that takes two parameters, our channel, which is the channel object we defined further up, and then the content, which we just defined. So channel and content. And I'm going to close that out. So what that would do is write our chat message to that socket with the channel we defined and the content we defined. And there we go, we're good to go. So now if I were to run this, um, so I'll build the code that builds successfully. I'll go over to Unity and run that. And there we go. And you'll see here, we've got our socket is connected. We did that, you've got the chat channel. We don't see any messages yet because we haven't output those, um, although we've sent them. Uh, we can't receive them because obviously we haven't had another person join the channel to receive those messages, and we ourselves aren't capturing those yet. So how do you capture messages that we've sent? That we've sent? Or well, we've sent, or another user has sent. Okay. Basically, messages that are sent to this channel, how do we get those? Yeah. Well, this is where we get back to event handlers again. So there is an um, event handler on sockets for receiving a message from a channel. So if we go back up to uh, where we're defining event handlers in our socket, we can define a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and whack in a new one here and do socket and then we're going to looking we're looking for the event received channel message and then uh, in our previous event handlers we've just done two parents because we're not looking for any parameters on this lambda function this one we are looking for parameter we're looking for the message we've received so i'm going to put in that plus equals again and then the we're looking for the parameter message so whenever we get whenever we capture this event it will extract the message and then we can act on that so let's just go ahead and output that to log so do the fat arrow, open it up, and then debug.log format. And then in that, those parentheses, I'm just going to throw in that message that yeah. I've captured. Okay. So now if I go back to Unity and run this again, and there we go, we can see that the message has been output. Um, and that's basically all the, the skeleton you need to build a uh, messaging app within your Unity game. So we can, we can capture that, we can use this event handler to capture that message, output it to a chat box, whatever it is that you're using uh, real-time chat for in your game.
Okay, so chat's great, but yep. what other real-time stuff can you do? Sure. So the main piece of real-time functionality within the Karma, aside from the social fe features, is real-time multiplayer. So the Karma supports a couple of times, uh, a couple of types of multiplayer. Um, real-time multiplayer is uh, basically where multiple players can join the game. It's for fast-paced games where the information is going straight from one client to another. Essentially, it all does go via the Karma, but it's basically passed straight through. So this is really great for um, games where latency is important. So in the next session, we're going to look at putting together your first players into a lobby where you could then start to build a real-time multiplayer game. Okay, well, look, in the meantime, have a look at heroiclabs.com. Uh, you can find the forums, the documentation, and loads more about Nakama there. Um, you can even give it a go and find the documentation for how to spin up your DigitalOcean container, or go back and look at the other videos in this series as well. So until the next one, thank you very much.